Hello everybody, I am Tanya Pandey and you're watching Quotes This Week at Live Law. Let's dive into the important judgments of the week gone by. A bench of Justices R.F. Nariman and B.R. Gavai granted ad interim bail to comedian Munawar Farooqi, accused of hurting religious sentiments in the case registered against him by the Madhya Pradesh Police. The court relied on the submission of Farooqi's counsel that the arrest was made in violation of the procedure contained in Section 41 of the Code of Criminal Procedure and that the principle laid down in the 2014 judgment in Arnesh Kumar versus the State of Bihar had not been followed. The benches also stayed the production warrant issued in a case by the UP police. In a significant verdict, the Supreme Court has held that a financial creditor which is not a related party to the corporate debtor at present can also be excluded from the Committee of Creditors if it is found that its removal of the related party label was a plan or strategy to bypass the bar under the first proviso of Section 21 Clause 2 of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. The bench headed by Justice D. Vai Chandrachu was considering the issue whether the disqualification under the proviso would attach to a financial creditor only in presente or if the disqualification also extended to those financial creditors who were related to the corporate debtor at the time of acquiring the debt. The court also held that collusive or sham transactions with a corporate debtor will not amount to financial debt within the meaning of the code. While considering the issue, the bench discussed the meaning of the terms financial debt and collusive transactions. It noted that financial debt means a debt along with interest, if any, which is disbursed against the consideration for the time value of money. The Supreme Court has held that Section 43D Clause 5 of Unlawful Activities Prevention Act per se does not oust the ability of constitutional courts to grant bail on the ground of violation of fundamental right to speedy trial. A bench of Justices N. V. Ramana, Suryakant and Aniruddha Bose passed said order in an appeal filed by the National Investigation Agency against the Kerala High Court order granting bail to the accused in palm shopping of Thorupura Newman College professor T.J. Joseph in the year 2011. The court also observed that Section 43D Clause 5 of the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act is comparatively less stringent than Section 37 of the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act. This means that bail cannot be granted under Unlawful Activities Prevention Act if there are reasonable grounds for believing that the accusations against such person is prima facie true. However, under the NDPS Act, bail cannot be granted if there are reasonable grounds for believing that the person is not guilty of such offences and that he or she is not likely to commit any offence while on bail. Supreme Court Judge Justice M. R. Shah termed Prime Minister Narendra Modi our most popular, loved, vibrant and visionary leader while speaking at a virtual function related to the release of a commemorative stamp on the occasion of the Diamond Jubilee of the Gujarat High Court. Chief Justice of the Gujarat High Court, Vikram Nath, said that the Prime Minister was highly popular due to his commitment to the country. The Supreme Court has upheld the termination of liberalized active retirement scheme for guaranteed employment for safety staff, largesse for railway employees. The largesse scheme introduced in the year 2004 and modified in the year 2010 enabled certain category of railway employees to seek voluntary retirement after they reach the age group of 55 to 57 years or upon completion of service for 33 years, they could seek appointment of their children in their place. The bench of Justices D. Vai Chandrachur, Indira Banerjee and Sanjeev Khanna said that the scheme provided for an avenue of a backdoor entry into the service of the railways. Offences under the Prevention of Corruption Act are offences against the society, the Supreme Court observed while setting aside a Gujarat High Court judgment acquitting an accused in a corruption case. 
The accused was an assistant director in ITI Gandhinagar, convicted for the offences punishable under Section 7, read with Sections 13 Clause 1 and 2 of the Prevention of Corruption Act. The court said that in an appeal against the order of conviction, there are no such restrictions and the Court of Appeal has wide powers of appreciation of evidence and the High Court has to reappreciate the entire evidence on record, being a first appellate court. The Supreme Court has observed that mere possession or recovery of currency notes is not sufficient to constitute an offence under Section 7 of the Prevention of Corruption Act. A bench of Justices Ashok Bhushan, R. Subhash Reddy and M. R. Shah observed that to prove the charge, it has to be proved beyond reasonable doubt that the accused voluntarily accepted money, knowing it to be a bribe. The accused in this case was a sanitary inspector of Madurai Municipal Corporation and had been acquitted in a corruption case by the trial court. The High Court had, while allowing the appeal filed by the state, reversed the trial court judgment and convicted the accused. The Supreme Court has held that if a corporate debtor has only offered security by pledging shares without undertaking to discharge the borrower's liability, then the creditor in such a case will not become financial creditor as defined under the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. The court held that such a creditor could be a secured creditor but will not be a financial creditor under the IBC entitled to take part in the insolvency resolution process. The Supreme Court has observed that before directing freezing of bank account under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act, the authority has to record the belief of commission of the act of money laundering. Deputy Director, Directorate of Enforcement, through the communication address to the anti-money laundering officer of some banks, instructed them that the accounts maintained by a company be debit freezed or stop operations until further orders with immediate effect. The High Court had upheld this while disposing the writ petitions filed by the company. The Supreme Court has observed that there is no reason to continue the sealing of premises by the Municipal Corporation of Delhi if they were actually sold as shops. This order was passed on an application filed by Defence Colony Market Welfare Association. The bench observed that it was important to ascertain which of the premises which had been sealed were originally purchased as shops meant for commercial use. The court has also permitted South Delhi Municipal Corporation to point out documents showing the true status of the shops in question. The Supreme Court has held that migration cannot be permitted from an unrecognized medical college to a recognized medical college in view of Regulation 6 of the Medical Council of India Regulations on Graduate Medical Education, 1997. Regulation 6 Clause 2 provides that migration is permissible only if both the colleges are recognized under Section 11 Clause 2 of the Indian Medical Council Act, 1956. The High Court was of the view that all institutions which are allowed to impart medical education should be deemed to be recognized colleges for the purpose of considering the applications for migration. This view of the High Court was considered patently erroneous by the Supreme Court. Dismissing special leave petitions filed by the central government with a delay of 6,616 days, the Supreme Court has remarked that the approach of the Union of India in the manner it has filed the present special leave petition exasperates us. The bench then imposed special costs of rupees 1 lakh. An appeal was filed by the Centre before the Delhi High Court, which had been dismissed for non-prosecution in December 2008. The Centre had sought restoration of the appeal in the year 2016, which was dismissed by the High Court, against which order the Centre had moved the Supreme Court. A litigant cannot be permitted to browbeat the court by seeking a bench of its choice. The Supreme Court observed while rejecting a plea seeking recusal of Justice Devi Chandrachur from hearing a case. The court observed that a litigant cannot seek recusal of a judge from hearing his or her case on the ground that he or she may not get a favourable order. 
A bench of Justices D.Y. Chandrachud and M.R. Shah has observed that persons in illegal occupation of government land or panchayat land cannot, as a matter of right, claim regularization. The applicants who were in illegal possession of the land belonging to the Gram Panchayat had made an application under Rule 12 Clause 4 of the Punjab Village Common Lands Regulation Rules 1964 for regularization, which was rejected by the competent authority. The High Court had dismissed the writ petition challenging the order passed by the authority. In appeal, the Apex Court bench noted that the applicants were found to be an illegal occupation of the area and referring to the 2011 judgment in Jatpal Singh versus the state of Punjab observed that regularization of their illegal occupation of the panchayat land could be accepted. That's all for this week. I'll be back again very soon with more updates. Have a wonderful week ahead of you. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Live Law.